Okay, well, thank you for asking me to come and talk to you today on general anaesthetic and conscious sedation for TAVI. Um, I actually work at Royal Prince Alfred Hospital. I did do my fellowship back in 2010 in Westmead, though, so you were almost right. Um, I have been working, sorry, for the last uh, five years over in Papworth Hospital as a consultant there, um, setting up there, and I set up their conscious uh, sedation program there. So my disclosures, I have in the past received funding from Edwards and travel expenses and I have spoken at educational events for them. Um, I do have limited Australian experience. I've just moved over in the last year and I don't uh, currently have a, a regular TAVI list. Um, I do, however, have worked for a number of years in Papworth Hospital, which is a high volume TAVI centre and, as I said, set up their conscious sedation programme there. So I think we'd all agree that TAVI has revolutionised the treatment for severe aortic stenosis. Um, we are now treating all inoperable and high-risk patients with TAVI, um, and it's moving towards intermediate and lower-risk patients. Because of this, uh, worldwide numbers have grown exponentially, as you've been, see as you've been shown in other slides. Uh, this is the UK numbers from when it started in 2007 up until 2016. And this is similar uh, data from the American database as well. With movement into intermediate and lower risk patients, this is just going to explode. So as our experience has increased, uh, the TAVI devices and the uh, delivery systems have also improved. Uh, and this means that non-invasive percutaneous transfemoral TAVI has really come into its own. And you can see at the start when we were doing uh, surgical and transfemoral at similar rates, uh, the transfemoral approach has really exploded. In the beginning, general anaesthesia was used for most TAVI procedures. Uh, however, local anaesthetic and conscious sedation did increase popularity. However, universal adoption has been controversial with this, and it's mainly location-based. So most of Europe has now conscious sedation as their uh, sole um, uh, anaesthetic technique, whereas America and Australia have been a bit slower uh, on the adoption. When I started in Papworth, all of our patients were done under general anaesthetic. So we had our cath lab with our table and our patient and our x-ray screen and x-ray machine and we had the cardiologist and their buddy and the uh, scrub team for them and the, and, the, um, scrub and the floor nurses. We then had the radiographer and the cardiac tech we had myself as the anaesthetist, and I normally had a registrar with me, uh, and my anaesthetic tech with my machine and my gas trolley uh, and my drug trolley. We then had the cardiac surgeons and their buddies. We had the perfusionist and the bypass pump. We had, I put in an art line for everybody, an endotracheal tube. I put in a big drip. I put in a central line, a TOE, and a urinary catheter. And then I had my echo consultant with the echo machine and the echo tech there and the valve trolley and the valve nurses and all the other bits and pieces that went with giving this patient a general anaesthetic. So bear huggers, nurse, bis, defibs, infusion pumps. <coughs> and we also sometimes had a, well, more often than not, had a rep in the background whispering in the cardiologist's ear. So... This is what our, our uh, cath lab looked like uh, when I first arrived for most TAVI procedures. And with introducing conscious sedation, this is what it more generally looked like for the, for the following years. So why did we decide to move to <coughs> conscious sedation? Well, um, basically, TAVI is already a um, minimally invasive technique, and it has the potential to reduce even more procedural invasive, invasiveness and promote fast-track pathways. Um, we also use, uh, do TAVI on a very high-risk patient population. So here's the UK data again, showing that the mean age of our patients isn't get it going down. It's still above 80. Um, and although mean logistic Euroscores are uh, slightly decreasing, we're still doing patients with scores above 18. So surely in these types of patients, less anaesthetic is better. And I also thought, even back in 2013, were we behind the curve? 
So this is a paper that was published in 2014. It looks at a European uptake of conscious sedation and local anaesthetic for TAVI during 2011 and 2012. And you can see that already the majority of centres were introducing conscious sedation for their TAVI, with some centres reaching 100%. As you can see from this graph, the United Kingdom was well behind. We weren't using conscious sedation at all. We were still GAing everybody. And over the course of the, the study period, you could see that conscious sedation increased and it GA decreased, with conscious sedation becoming the preferred technique by the end of 2012. And in fact, in Leipzig in Germany, which is one of the highest center, volume centres, um, they only used GA for their first few transfemoral TAVIs back in 2006, moving to a monitored anesthesia care with local anaesthetic and conscious sedation for the rest of their procedures. And they do a fair few. They, they reported over 650 in 2016. And of course, in the beginning, the God who gave us TAVI also gave us TAVI under sedation. So... I went off to Paris uh, and I took my cardiology and my surgical buddies with me and we learned how it was done. And when we came back, we wrote a protocol and I just basically kept it simple. I put in a block uh, and this allowed uh, surgical access was feasible if it was required. It also meant that the patients were in less pain, especially with the small tortuous vessels. I could get away with giving less sedation because of that, so most of my patients were actually awake. They had a, a, a low-dose remifentanil infusion, and I spoke to my patients. And those of you who know me know that I can talk a lot. Um, I gave Optiflow to my patients if they needed it for respiratory reasons. I got rid of the art line, I got rid of the big drip, I got rid of the central line, I got rid of the TOE, I got rid of the urinary catheter. And instead, I slaved my art line from the pigtail catheter and my central access from the femoral venous sheath. We used II to position the valve, and we actually used an echo tech who came in and did a transthoracic echo to check the valve afterwards. We used conscious sedation after that for all of our transfemoral patients, even the ones that I was told I couldn't do. So how did we do? Well, our first 44 patients, uh, we propensity matched with 44 GA patients that had come before. We published this in 2016, and we saw that the anaesthetic time and the recovery room time was decreased with a trend towards a decrease in length of stay that wasn't statistically significant. We also saw that inotrope infusions were no longer really needed, uh, and the patients that went into VT and VF at valve deployment were no longer. None of the other uh, outcomes or complications were affected. My anaesthetic charts went from the ones on the left to the ones on the right, very stable, and I was no longer needing to give calcium and metaraminol uh, preloading for valve deployment. Since then, in the UK, um, conscious sedation has taken off. Um, GA has fallen out of favour in line with the rest of Europe. So what about the rest of the evidence? Well, there are, the literature is filled with multiple observational studies. These are from like mine single institutions or from national databases. There's one randomised control trial. I'm not going to speak about it just now, but if you want to chat about it later, I can. That's the reference there. Uh, and there's four meta-analyses. So most recent meta-analyses published last year included 26 studies and over 10,000 patients. Primary endpoint was 30-day mortality. Um, and it showed that local anaesthetic and conscious sedation conferred a mortality benefit, and it was lower at 30 days with local anaesthetic and conscious sedation. Other outcomes, it showed that inotrope usage was lower, hospital and ICU length of stay, and procedure and fluoro time were less with conscious sedation. All other outcomes were, were no different. The same authors updated their meta-analysis just this year and added, as, added more, six more observational studies. This included a large uh, database study from the US with over 10,000 patients. 
And what they found was their 30-day mortality, hospital length of stay and inotrope support were all less with conscious sedation and, uh, and local anaesthetic. However, permanent pacemaker implantation was increased in that group. This is another meta-analysis published last year with just 4,000 patients showing that local anaesthetic and GA and local anaesthetic and GA didn't have any difference with 30-day mortality in hospital mortality or other endpoints. They did, however, show that there was a shorter ICU and hospital length of stay with reduced rates of inotropes and red cells. And the same, the same outcome of new pacemaker implantations were more frequent. If you look at the 30-day and in-hospital mortality, uh, there is a trend towards a decrease with the local anaesthetic and conscious sedation. However, it doesn't reach significance. And the inotropes and red cells did with less being required for local anaesthetic. So what about the US? Well, um, TAVI was approved in the US in 2011, and there's been a massive expansion in TAVI numbers since. They're pretty slow in the uptake of conscious sedation, with arguments that general anaesthetic increases procedural <coughs> stability. It allows for a more smoother um, management of complications, and that they can use a transesophageal echo uh, for placement. So we've seen this slide already. And from their database, they published in 2014, uh, they published, sorry, at the end of last year, uh, data from 2014 and 15 over a 14-month period with over 10,000 patients. Their conscious sedation rate at that time was 15.8%. But they did show that over the study period, which was only 14 months, conscious sedation increased from 10% to 20%. And that was significant, statistically significant. In outcomes, they showed that mortality uh, and hospital length of stay was reduced with conscious sedation, as was inotropes. And although in the raw data, procedural success was not different, in the adjusted data, uh, they did show, show that uh, um, procedural success was slightly lower with the local anaesthetic and conscious sedation. Other outcomes and complications weren't affected, including pace, uh, pacemakers. So what about Australia? Well, you tell me, because I haven't done a lot of TAVIs here. Uh, I've done a couple at RPA. Uh, both were done under conscious sedation. Uh, I have got some uh, data from RPA just over the last seven months. It was kindly given to me by Michael Wilson and Michael Seco, which showed that we've done 29 patients at RPA. 28 of them have been transfemoral, and six of them have been under conscious sedation, which is 21%, in line with the American <coughs> studies. I don't know if this is representative of the rest of Sydney or the rest of Australia. In summary, I think Tavi is here to stay and numbers are about to explode. Conscious sedation and local anaesthetic is gaining popularity and is almost universal for transfemoral in Europe. It does appear to be safe and feasible. It appears to have a reduction in mortality, hospital and ICU length of stay and inotrope use without an increase in procedural complications, although these are observational studies um, and there's a lot of um, bias towards them. It does require buy-in from the whole team. So as we were discussing about setting up a TAVI program, you need the whole team to be uh, on board with it. It has the potential to significantly reduce resource consumption. I think it certainly does reduce uh, length of stay and uh, operating time. And once you start using conscious sedation, I don't think you'll go back. So I ask you, Australia, are you ready to wake up? <laughs>